Hi students, welcome to PhD Jobs and Admission. This is Gauri. So in this video, I'm going to teach you about research methodology subject of Geetam University Research Admissions Test 2023. So in this session, I'm going to teach you about sampling methods in research methodology in detail by using MCQs. So basically, I'm going to teach you about characteristics of sampling, sampling in research methodology. And I have covered all the concepts relevant to this topic in this video. That's why all of your doubts will get clear. But still, if you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment box after viewing this video. So students, before starting this session, I want to tell you that Global Online Team provides you complete course on research methodology. With the help of this course, you can guaranteed qualify Geetam University's research admissions test in the year 2023 because in this entrance examination you will be asking 50 percent questions on research methodology itself and that's why whenever you score more marks in research methodology then obviously you can guaranteed qualify the research admissions test at Geetam university so in this course global online team provides you full syllabus video lectures under which theories and mcqs both are available we provide you full syllabus notes and mock tests so basically students we have 10 mock tests like this and each mock test contains 40 mcqs and that's why overall you can solve 400 mcqs over here itself we provide you more than 1500 mcqs revision pdf with the help of this pdf you can revise all your topics in a single pdf and that's why you will be getting 80 percent mcqs from this PDF only out of 100% MCQs in the research methodology section of Geetam University research admissions test. And all of these study materials are available in the both the languages, those are Hindi and English. So students, if you want to buy this course, then you can either download the global online app from the Play Store. For that, I have given the link in the description box of this video or else you can contact me through the given WhatsApp numbers on the screen. So students, the course fees are only 699 rupees, which are really very low. And in these low fees, Global Online team provides you step-by-step -step guidance at each and every stage of your PhD admission procedure at Geetam University. And as well, Global Online team provides you 100% passing guarantee that you can guaranteed qualify the research entrance test at Geetam University. So students, your research admissions test at Geetam University is on 25th June and that's why you have only one month in your hand to do your preparations for the entrance exam. And that's why students, you can do all of your study of research methodology from this course only. You don't need to go to the other sources to study research methodology and that's why you will cover all of your uh, study topics uh, of research methodology from this course only and within the minimum period of time and that's why you will get more time to study on other subjects as well so this course is really very helpful to all of you students and as well you can watch demo video lectures you can give demo mock tests and that too free of cost from the you know global online app okay so which is really helpful question one is for the study of any population, sampling is conducted because it is stash. So basically students, whenever a researcher wants to study any population, then for studying that particular population, he does the sampling. Sampling means what, you know, taking out some samples from the population for the study. And why we do this? Okay, why this is essential? What is the reason behind it? So whether it is expensive, whether it is uh, difficult, whether it is time efficient or whether it is biased. So students, whenever you see these options, then you will understand that whenever uh, some technique is expensive, then why a researcher will use it, right? Then it will be a disadvantage for him. So it, this will get eliminated. Whenever a technique is difficult, then obviously no one follow it. Okay, whenever a technique is easy, then obviously one can follow it. And that's why this option also is the disadvantage. So this option gets eliminated. And as well, whenever there is a bias technique, then because of that, there will be unethical issues in the research. And that's why no one want this. So this again gets eliminated as it is disadvantageous. And that's why your correct answer should be uh, three. Because over here 
time efficient uh, is one of the advantage of sampling technique because a researcher can study whole population at a time because it includes lot of participants and that's why it will require a lot of time and funding for a researcher to study all the participants in the target population and that's why he uses sampling technique so that he can properly select some samples from the population which are the representative of the whole population and it will be time efficient and as well researcher does not in uh, you know does not want lots of funding so your correct answer should be three over here next what is a sample called if it represents one or few characteristics of the population more than the others so whenever we select a sample okay from the target population and whenever that particular sample represents one or more than that characteristics of the population okay more than the other samples okay then what such kind of sample is called whether it is called as good sample bad sample biased sample ineffective sample so students uh, such samples are called as biased samples because it has more than one characteristics of the population okay than the other samples okay because you know it means that researcher you know researchers selectively you know selected such samples okay because they have these characteristics and researcher over here has not randomly selected the samples and researcher has you know done a uh, biased over here and that's why this sample has been selected okay and that's why it is called as the biased sample okay why are sampling triads important in sampling so within the sampling technique why sampling triads means sampling characteristics are important so first of all they help us in deciding the sample size they help us to differentiate between useless units and useful units or they form the basis of the research questions or they are the deciding factor in the inclusion of a unit in the sample so basically students the characteristics of samples are really most important things because these uh, characteristics of the samples you know are the representative of the target population and that's why because of these characteristics only we select the samples from the target population and that's why this would be the deciding factor okay based on that factor basically we you know decide whether we want to you know select that particular sample in our study or not and that's why it is very important in sampling and that's why your correct answer should be four because they are the deciding factor in the inclusion of a unit in the sample okay which of the following is true about sampling now here they have given us some statements regarding sampling and we need to identify the true statement about sampling so whether it is sample is a part of population sampling saves time money and energy sampling helps in estimating sampling error all of the above so students the correct answer over here is all of the above because basically sample is a part of population because you know samples are the units that we actually select from the po population itself and that's why obviously sample is a part of population so this statement is true again as i have told you earlier in this video that because of sampling researcher can save lot of amount of time as well researcher can save lots of money and as well energy okay that's why this again statement is true about sampling and as well sampling helps in estimating sampling error basically sampling error causes because uh, cause actually causes because of the you know uh, mistakenly chosen a wrong sample size and as well whenever we use wrong sampling methods then again because of that sampling error occurs and we are going to see in detail in the next part of this video so don't worry but basically sampling actually help helps us in estimating the sampling error it's itself that's why this statement is again correct about this that's why your correct answer should be four because all of these statements are true about sampling next is sampling cases means now what is the meaning of sampling cases okay so whether it is sampling using or sampling frames 
whether it is identifying people who are suitable for research whether it is literally the researchers briefcase or whether it is sampling of people newspapers television programs etc television programs etc so basically students you need to uh, think about these words sampling and cases so sampling means sampling techniques means we are selecting samples from the population right what are cases basically cases means what cases means particular people individual okay cases can be anything incident any objects okay that's why sampling cases means you know the uh, the case that we have selected as a sample okay from the target population so basically it could be anything it could be a person it could be people it could be you know any kind of objects okay and that's why your correct answer should be over here four because sampling of people sampling of newspapers sampling of television programs sampling of incidents sampling of certain objects so these are the sampling cases okay next the aggregate of all the units pertaining to a study is called so whenever you do the total of all the units which is relevant to a study okay basically to a research study so what we call it as whether we call it as population or universe or whether we call it as unit or whether we call it as sample or whether we call it as frame so basically students it is called as the population or universe because population uh, comprises of all the units right which includes it right or or universe includes all the units uh, you know which are actually basically the part of the universe right and that's why whole population or whole universe includes all the units which are relevant to a research study so whenever you aggregate all these units then obviously you will form a whole population or universe that's why your correct answer should be one next dash refers to uh, those elements from which samples are specifically chosen or selected for research so from which type of population basically we choose samples for research so whether it is finite population whether it is target population whether it is infinite population whether it is sampling population so obviously students now all of you understood that the correct answer should be second that is target population okay so understand over here that you know whenever a researcher wants to study any kind of a population then that population would be a target population for that researcher because a researcher only intends to target that population only and researcher wants to only study on that population not other population all of you getting and that's why it would be a target population for that specific researcher and from the target population basically researcher selects some samples for the study okay what is exactly finite population finite population means we know the you know number of uh, participants in the population which has you know finite number of people in the population what is infinite population infinite population includes you know infinite amount of people we don't know the exact number of people in the in that population what is sampling population sampling population is again the population okay uh, which actually includes the samples for the study but basically you know the concept is that target population you know refers to those elements from which samples are specifically chosen or selected for research not from the sampling population so try to understand students and that's why your correct answer should be two that is target population next is a member of the population is called now a particular member of the population is called what whether it is called as element data family group so now all of you understood that whenever there is a member of a, of the population then obviously it is either called as a unit or element and that's why your correct answer should be one okay the population to be sampled is divided into units which are known as 
okay so whenever a population that would be sampled in future okay is divided into different kinds of units so what are those called as so whether it is called as sampling frame or sampling error or sampling gap or sampling units obviously it is called as the sampling units because these are the units right so for example i have uh, you know thousand people of population and this population is need to be sampled and that's why it is divided into different units okay s1 s2 s3 s4 so these are the four units so basically this is called as one of the sampling unit this is called as another sampling unit this is called as sampling unit this is called as sampling unit and that's why your correct answer should be four over here okay and a sampling frame basically is the frame okay from a uh, or you can say ki which includes all the uh, you know samples that already we have uh, selected for a study so this is called as the sampling frame but sampling units basically includes the units okay of the population to be sampled okay and it does not give the guarantee that it includes all the participants which are selected for the study but sampling frame includes all the uh, you know population or participants which are selected for the study and all of you now understood that error uh, you know here the sampling error causes because of the wrong uh, you know selection of sample size and as well because of the wrong selection of the a uh, sampling technique that we are going to see uh, in the next video so don't worry and sampling gap means the gap which is there between the sampling procedures okay next which of the following are steps in sampling process so now here they have given some steps of sampling process and we need to find out exactly which of these are the steps in sampling process whether they are defining target population whether selecting and identifying the sample method or choosing sampling frame or all of the above so students all of these basically are the steps in sampling process so first of all we need to define the target population which is the most important uh, step and after that we need to select the sample from the population and for that we need to identify which type of sampling method we need to choose whether we need to choose probability sampling method or we need to choose non probability sampling procedure we are going to see this uh, things in the next part of this video so don't worry and as well we need to you know uh, choose the sampling frame that i have told you earlier right which includes what sampling frame basically includes all the participants which are selected for the study okay and that's why all of these are the steps in sampling process so that's why your correct answer should be over here four okay so let us see st uh, step by step uh, what are the different steps in sequence in sampling process so first of all you you need to define the target population what would be your target population okay then uh, you need to uh, you know decide exactly uh, what type of sampling method you are going to use whether you are going to use um, probability sampling method or non probability sampling method then select okay the sampling frame or choose the sampling frame okay so these are basically the steps in sequence okay in sampling process okay that's why your correct answer should be 4 so students thank you for watching this session i hope all of you understood exactly what are the characteristics of sampling techniques and as well what is the importance of it why we use it in the research methodology and in the next part of this video or in the tomorrow's video i'm going to uh, teach you about exactly what are the different probability sampling techniques and as well non probability sampling techniques and these concepts are really important to all of you because on such concepts you know every year you will be asking three to four questions okay so you need to know exactly what are the sampling techniques what are the different types of sampling techniques okay so but still if you have any doubts regarding this video you can ask me in the comment box of this video